Hello to this new tutorial. Today I want to show you how you can interpolate big piles of frames without running into memory issues. I got question in the comments how to do this and I researched a little bit and I realized that there is nothing like this workflow so far. So I created something which is based on already generated images in a folder and this workflow runs through this folder step by step and generates the interpolated frames between every frame pair step by step without loading the whole folder so that your RAM is not filled with all the frames and will not overrun. So only one interpolation is done at once and this workflow goes through your folder of images step by step. This is based on a wild mix of custom comfy UI nodes which I will list in the description below. It was quite a wild ride to find find the nodes which work well together but in the end everything worked out so in the future i might make a new version an updated version of this workflow with more simple nodes or maybe a little bit easier to work with but for now this is working it should help a lot of you to work through big piles of images and interpolate the whole bunch of them through without having memory issues let's start from scratch i want to start with loading our images i use the load image badge node from the vas node suit so at node or suit io load image badge I define the path of all the frames I want to interpolate between and we use the single image mode here. We need to duplicate this since we need two frames to interpolate between and we need to pack our frames to a batch. So we pipe both outputs into our batch images node to have a batch which we then can fill into our interpolation node. I, I use the rive interpolation node. I keep the settings uh, like this for now and then I want to save the results. For this I choose the VIS node pack again and choose the image save node of the VIS pack. This node gives us the possibility to define a folder where we put our interpolated frames into. We need to define which frame the load image batch node will load. In this case, uh, the first node uh, is, uh, has the index zero. So that means it's loading the first frame. And this uh, node needs the index of one. This means it's loading the second frame. In programming, um, you point up from zero. Zero means one. So in programming and informatics, uh, you're starting at zero, just, just as a side note. And this should give us results already. I will have a test. So as a base, I take some simple animate diff uh, animation I did before. And we see out of those two frames, there have been created three frames. If we push this up to 10, we get 
11 frames. So this is only the first step. This is the basic interpolation. This only uses the first and the second frame for now. To go through our whole pile of images, we need to do some automation and special things now. Let's first start by making an automation to crank up our index. We need to count up this value and this value one by one so that we later can run through everything frame by frame. For this I use the incrementer node out of the masquerade nodes. This gives us the possibility every time we run the patch the number in this node will be increased and then we can fill in this number to our load image batch nodes. We have to set this to increment and now since we need this node have the number one higher than in this node, so this is zero, this one. When this is one, I need this to be two. So we have to add one to the output of this node to fill the value into this node. We could take two of those nodes uh, with the difference of one to fill uh, in the second node, but I find it easier like uh, this way. So you only have to adjust one number in the start of the workflow. So this is easier. For the addition of one to this number, I use the number operation node out of the VAS node suit. Since this is taking numbers, I have to convert this integer to a number. Since this is not an input, we have to convert it to an input. So right click on this arrow and choose convert A to input. Now we can fill in our integer and it will be converted to a number. So we're filling this number A into this number operation and we choose addition as an action and now we need another number which is added to number A. So we use the into number again. Put it to one and fill it inside our number operation. And now we need to convert the index settings of our nodes to inputs also. Right click on this arrow and convert index to input. And do this for the first node, for the first batch node also. Convert index to input. And now we can fill the integer value into our index and we can fill this integer to the first one. So this seed is zero. So in the first pass of this workflow, we have a zero filled into the load image batch node and it will load the first image out of the folder. For the second batch, it, it will add one this one to our zero, so we get one as an output and this gets number one as an index and will load the second image. So sorry if this is a little bit complicated uh, with the zero and the one and the shift of one number, but uh, it is like it is in mathematics and in informatics in programming like this and I cannot change it, but you will get familiar with it if you are not used to it. This control after generate will increment our number one step after each 
generation and this will step through our whole folder. First time we use it, there will be index zero, index one. The next time this will one. So we will have index one and index two. This means the second frame out of the folder and the third frame will be loaded and interpolated between, then this will be two. That means the third frame will be interpolated to the fourth frame and so on. So to automate this, we need to use the extra options in the queue prompt and we need to check the auto queue option. So after the after every generation, the prompt will be started again and the number will be increased into one and it will go through all your images step by step and not all at once. So they will not be loaded everything into your RAM and this is much more RAM saving as if you have to load everything to your ROM. But we are not finished yet. We have one problem. This arrive node will output uh, our first frame and our second frame and all the frames in between every time we run this workflow. That means that there will be some frames doubled. So when we generate between first and second and then between second and third, the second frame will be doubled. And then when we generate between third and fourth, uh, the third frame will be doubled and the fourth frame and the fifth frame and the sixth frame and so forth. This is because the Rive interpolation node gives always all frames out. So the first, the second and the frames in between. And we have a doubling of those end and first frames every run. Now it gets a little bit complicated. We need some if and else logic for this. We need to split our image batch and separate the first frame and only output the last frames with all the starting frames because of the duplication. We need to make some space here and run our batch of 11 images into split image batch node. It's part of the VHS notes this can split our batch which is consisting of 11 image in this case and can output uh, two batches and split it at a certain point so in this case i split it after index one this gives us the first image of the batch to image a and the 10 images after that go to image b so let's have a image preview here and an image preview here to see what we get out of this node. So let's generate. So what you see here is we get our first frame here separated and then the frames after that get outputted here. So this is 10 frames, this is one, and this gives us all the 11 frames here. Since the first generation generates the images with the end frame, we don't need this end frame, which is the same as the starting frame for the next generation. We don't need the starting frame. We can split it off. We only need those frames since this would be double. We have to check if this workflow is running the first time. If so, we put out every 11 frames. If it is not, we only put out those 10 frames without the starting frame to prevent the doubling. We do this with the image input switch node from the VAS node suit. This um, image input switch is quite simple. Depending of the Boolean input, true or false, it's sending image A through to the output or image B. So we pipe our splitted images into the image A port and the unsplitted images to the image B port. And now we need the Boolean information, true or false. For this, we need to make a logic uh, operation and compare our values. So we use the compare node out of the ConfUI logic pack. The bool port goes to the Boolean input of this node. 
we already can connect uh, the images to the image save node. And now we need some information here. So at first I connect our index into the compare node to the A input and for the B port I take another incremental node so connect this to the B port and set it to zero and set it to fixed so we are comparing our initial index which goes to A with the number we put to B. So the number is zero and we look if A is bigger than B. So if our index is zero, we know it is not bigger than zero, it is equal. So this is false. So it gives false to the image input switch and this means our image B will go through our output. If we process our workflow another time, the index will be one, and therefore it is bigger than our zero. So that means the compare node will output two, and this gives the input switch the information to, to bypass the image A output to the save node that means the reduced the splitted batch without the starting image so that we don't have duplicate images and this will be done until our batch is done so what is really important for the incremental node at the beginning is that this max value is bigger than the amount of images you want to process so if you have let's say 200 images, this should be bigger than 200. So just put in a super big number and you will be fine. Let's have another look. So let's put the multiplier a little bit smaller. And let's put our seat again back to zero. And we should be good to go. Let's give it a try. Let's disable the auto queue again for a test. This should output our first image, the interpolated image in between and the last image now, if we run it for the first time. So that should the output should be three images. So there we are. We have our three images. Every other generation should output two images only depending on this logic and so that we have no duplicate images so let's do it another one it should only output two images there we go two images another one should only output two images again and there we go it's going through our batch step by step and calculating the images between every pair of images. So we can hit the auto queue feature again and let it run through. So we're ending with this error message. There is no object left to process. This workflow can be used for as many images as you like. So yeah, let's have a look at the results. Really smooth because of the interpolation. And I cannot see any double images. Since this uh, workflow is quite complicated, I decided to put it on my GitHub page so that you can download it. Uh, maybe a quick walkthrough how you would use it. It's important to set your folder path here on both uh, load image batch nodes. Should both be the same path then you need to adjust the seat settings to zero 
and then set your output pass and then you should be good to go. I put a link to the file on my GitHub in the description below as well as links to all the custom notes you need. I hope this walkthrough, this tutorial helps you and please subscribe and like the video. I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.